Hey, how you doing there again, folks? Me again, of course. Brandon Wenzel, come back at you. Another offering off my sampler platter. <sighs> yes, indeed, folks, for sampler video series videos I've been doing for the while now. We're over there, try out food and drink items. I eat the stuff, I drink stuff. And, folks, I'm going to talk about stuff. I'm going to let you know all you need to know about hopefully delicious stuff that the time I'm doing this, folks. Yeah, I grew up watching some Pokemons. Okay, I did it. Am I a little sad to see Ash finally go over there and fade off as the main character of this series? You better believe I am. It'd have been nice if he'd at least gotten to be like 13 or 14 years old or some shit. Better eventually show up and I'll be honest, I haven't watched the series in I don't know how long. It's just mostly sense and nostalgia. But anyway, uh, yes indeed folks, I'm going to go over there, I'm going to eat some stuff, I'm going to talk about it. Whilst I'm doing so, I'm inside the truck today. It's a uh, almost eerily warm day in uh, February. I'm sure lots of people are enjoying it. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little bit much. Not gonna lie, a little bit much for February. But anyway, um, and yeah, I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna try some shit whilst I'm doing so. Aside from being in the truck, I'm wearing a cool shirt. Folks, when I wear a cool shirt, I like to highlight the shirt. What cool shirt am I wearing? Boom! I'm wearing my Nine Inch Nails Cold and Black and Infinite shirt. It was from 2018, damn it. Uh, love Nine Inch Nails, been a big, big fan ever since I was fairly a little kid, actually. And this is a weird kid. And uh, just ever since, been my favorite band. Uh, I've sadly only been able to see them perform a few times live just because usually, you know, they play bigger venues and stuff like that. I'm more of a smaller venue kind of guy. But I was fortunate a few years back to go over there and get to see them. Anyway, folks, what am I trying for y'all today? What are we doing? Well, Pokemon comes from Japan, right? Ha ha ha. Because, folks, we're trying. Boom! It's. Uh, yeah, sure, why not? It is. Uh, Dongo! Specifically, Mitarashi Dongo, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, here, let me get rid of the expiration sticker. <laughs> uh, yeah, so. I actually have a Japanese marketplace not too far away from where I'm at. Better picture, ha ha ha, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I have a Japanese marketplace not too far from where I live. Uh, it's a great spot, it's a little bit out of the way, but you can get like authentic Japanese stuff, uh, great food, you know, supplies and stuff. It's typically where I get my chopsticks. And I decided to pop in today because it had been a little bit. Went over there, got some lunch, it was delicious. I decided to go through the supermarket second supermarket section, and they had this. And I was taken aback because I have no idea what this is. I've been into Japanese stuff ever since I was in high school. With, you know, got into it with anime and stuff like that and everything. And, uh, you know, I thought I had a pretty good idea of most of the stuff. Never heard of Mitarashi Dango. So I looked it up. Apparently these are rice dumplings coated in, like, a sweet soy sauce. That sounds good to me, and it sounds like something that I'm going to try and review. So let's open up the thing. Thank you. They look very pretty, don't they? <laughs> okay. They come on a stick. I like that most civilizations enjoy food on sticks. It's just a thing, whether it's a corn dog or these things or, you know, you like teriyaki sticks. It's a whole thing. They smell interesting. The only way I can think to describe it as like a sweet soy sauce. All right. It's super good, but it's a little weird. Um, so the biggest flavor is definitely the sweet and soy sauce, which Almost tastes like a teriyaki sauce. Like, not exactly. I'm not going to go over there and be that guy. It definitely is different. But <clears throat> if I didn't know that it was a sweet, uh, sweet and soy sauce, and I was just giving it, my brain would think that it was just like a weird teriyaki sauce. Uh, because it's initially very sweet, and then you get like a very salty soy sauce kind of undertone to it.
Like once the sweetness fades back, it's more like a mild soy sauce flavor. And the dumplings themselves are kind of sweetened as well. I don't know if it's just them actually being sweetened or if it's just because of the sauce, but they have kind of a sweetness even after it seems like most of the sauce is gone. And the sauce is kind of like gelatinous. The dumpling itself is uh, soft but chewy. Not like abrasively so, though. Hmm. Last one. Oh. I like them. I like them. They're weird. I can't say I've had anything quite like them. And I'm not sure exactly what they're supposed to be. I don't know if they're meant to be sort of a dessert. Or if they're meant to be just sort of like a... Sort of sweet side dish. Because, I mean... You know, like... You obviously have, like, sweet sauces and stuff like that. Sweet and sour sauce, probably the most famous. So, you know, it's not entirely unprecedented to have something sweet and have it still be you know, not considered like a candy or a dessert. But, yeah, it's good. I like it. And the only thing is, they're very uh, rich. They're very rich with the flavor. And... Like, there isn't that many of these. Like, it doesn't take up that much overall space. And that's a good thing, because while I do like these, it would be hard for me to go over there and eat more than one of these, like one row, in a sitting. Like, these two, I've got a little bit. Like, the expiration date, I think, said to the 17th. So I've, I've got a little time. These are going to be held off in my fridge. I will go over there and grab one periodically, because they are very rich. The, you know, you've got the saltiness, you've got the sweetness, you know, and then you have the sort of savoriness of the whole thing. But it's really good, and I'm glad I got to try it. Um, it's not my favorite Japanese dish that I've ever had, but by the same token, uh, I say, well, it's definitely not the worst either, but it's something that I like. Well, two questions have to be asked. Would I get it again? Would I recommend it? Yes, but only very occasionally. Like, I don't hit up the the marketplace all that often. You know, I've gone a, a little bit more frequently lately just because I, I'd been missing it. You know, it been such a long time since I'd been back here. Uh, so I do enjoy it. It wouldn't be something I would get every time. It's something I would get maybe, like, every five times. And then I would just, like I said, I would go over there and maybe eat one while I was there let the other two sit for a little bit and then go over there and wolf those down. Just because, like I said, it's so rich and it's like, it's so much. Like, it doesn't seem like it's going to be that much because like they're not that big, but yeah, they got some, they got some flavor for them. Uh, as to whether or not I would recommend them, it, it depends. I mean, first of all, you'd have to find like a Japanese marketplace or someplace that makes them, which might be difficult depending where you live. Um, to the average person, I don't know if it would be the dish that I would recommend you trying to get into Japanese food if you're not already associated. But if you are somebody who already is, you know, if you're maybe an anime or just Japanese culture or what have you, or maybe, you know, maybe you're actually of Asian descent, uh, but you just haven't experienced this particular thing, then I think it would be something worth going over there and trying out just because... By that point, you already have an idea of some of the flavors that are going to be at play, even if it's a little bit different. So I would recommend it, but again, I think it's it's not the best introductory dish. Try a few other things first, then maybe get to the to the dango. Dango. 
Anyway, folks, that's going to do it for me on this one. Five things before I get out of here. Have yourself a great rest of the day. Spectacular rest of the week. Mind your mentor rest of the month. rest of the year. Folks, you can go over there and have yourselves a truly Pokemon-tastic rest of your life, I guess. I, you know, I can only go off uh, the first four games, red, blue, gold, and silver. I guess technically you've got yellow and crystal in there, too, but I, I never I never fucked with those. I was all, I was always the, the, the original ones. Um, Pokemon's great. I like it. Still, still going really strong to this day, so... Final two things. Number one, try to bring some positivity in the world. It's not always possible. It is, however, always appreciated. But we do can't do it all the time. I know I can't do it all the time. Here's what you're going to do, folks. You're going to try not to be an asshole. It's not always the easiest thing in the world to do. Trust me. I know it. I'm having a good day. I got a day off. I got to hang out with my friend yesterday. I'm having some delicious Japanese food. I'm having a good day. But at the end of the day, not every day is going to be great. There's going to be days where you're going to find yourself in stressful situations. You're going to get frustrated. Might be tempted to be a bit of an asshole. It happens. It's important when we run into those situations. Take a step back. Try to mitigate the level of assholishness in our lives. Hopefully do better for ourselves and for those around us. Very final thing, folks. Do the thing. Whatever the thing is for you, that's what I want you to go out and do. Folks, maybe you're going to go over there. Maybe you're going to watch this review. And maybe it's going to inspire you to go over there and try out some, uh, you know, ethnic dishes that you're not particularly familiar with. You would be surprised at the amount of stuff that might be around you. I mean, I can't speak for everywhere, obviously. But I know, you know, living where I live in Illinois, I have a, you know, a bevly of just all kinds of Ethiopian food and Balkan food and, you know, Japanese food. I mean, Japanese food's a little bit more common, but, you know, it's it's a whole thing these days. So maybe you're going to go over there. Maybe you're going to try out some food that, you know, uh... Uh, Romanian food, right? And you're going to go over and you're going to try some Romanian food. And it's going to be delicious and everything like that. And you're going to find a little message in your Romanian dish. And it's going to be a little thing that goes over there and says, Help me, I'm Vlad the Impaler. I have been locked away for the last 2,000 years or however long it's been. Uh, only you can save me. Then you go over there, you go on a quest, find him, you open it up. Of course, it turns out he's, you know, he's Vlad the Impaler. Maybe not the best dude to have released. But it's okay because you're going to go over there and you're going to fight him back. You're going to seal them away, and along the way, the friendship and all the things, and you'll have learned all types of magic and kung fu. Or conversely, uh, maybe just go over there and search out your local food scene and see what's available to you. Bye!